What's good, YouTube? You know who it is. It's your boy Byron, aka the Motown Hustler, aka the Grass Assassin. Coming at you with another video. This video is going to be my 2023 lawn care setup. It's not going to be, it may or may not be all inclusive of all the stuff that I have. We'll see. So, uh, let's see if I can get this. Okay, y'all know from um, my last year's uh, lunk has set up that I have a storage unit. And I operate my business out of the storage unit. I'm going to get y'all set up real quick. So I won't have to keep my hand on this thing. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So, so yeah, uh, I don't have any real major uh, new additions to the business, but there are some things that I, I don't have here that I want to show you guys that I got. And it's not really about the brand of equipment that I have. It's more so the particular pieces that allow me to be more efficient than, you know, than I have been in the past. And for the yards that I do on a, on a routine basis, it's the most efficient setup for those yards. And it also keeps me it keeps me uh more consistent in in showing up on a daily basis and even though i may have breakdowns from time to time it doesn't interrupt my flow because i have backup pieces of equipment of of equal efficiency to fill in and handle those situations and at the same time i don't have to spend a lot of time doing maintenance on my equipment because I can take it to the shop and I can keep doing the uh, income producing activities and let the shop deal with, you know, repairing the, uh, the, uh, the unit that goes down. And then when I get that unit back, you know, put it back in the rotation, you know. So, uh, and just, if stuff don't necessarily have to break down, I can just drop it off for a uh, preventative, on a preventative maintenance schedule to get it looked at and checked out to make sure it keeps running at, uh, at its top uh, performance. So, um, you know, and, and that helps with the longevity of the machine. Uh, it reduces the cost of having to go out and buy uh, new pieces, you know, more often. So, I mean, it, it's, it, I, th I think, uh, I think I'm, I'm, I'm really good. I don't really see well, there are some things that that I want to get in the future, but the the need for those things uh, is not there. It's more of a a want, and and those things will will benefit. But you know, I'm not in a uh, a state of desperation to get them right now. So let me give y'all a quick walk around. And show y'all what I can show you guys, you know. So let's get this flipped around. Okay. The boring stuff, I guess. Yeah, my my spray rig, 200 gallon, 300 foot uh, hose, you know, Honda motor. Uh, I got my, my three backpacks, uh, selective non-selective uh pgrs uh, some of the chemicals i use my gas can five gallon gas can my uh, two gallon mix my 25 gallon spray rig and this i was gonna i was gonna uh, originally use for my shrub treatment but 
uh, I think I'm going to use it for like um, St. Augustine and um, the centipede yards that I have and it makes a selective herbicide in it. I had made up my mind on it, but um, I'm still going over it. And now in my big tank, I have uh, my selective uh, blanket application um, mix. Okay, uh, these are the things that I don't pull out that often, but they're available. Um, my class in the aerator. Uh, I really don't don't uh, do mulch that much anymore, but I have my wheelbarrow, but it's there in case I decide I want to uh, tackle a project like that. I got my two uh, push sprayers, spreaders that I don't really use that much as well, you know. And I got my Hustler Trim Star 36 inch walk behind. Yeah, and I love this machine, man. I just, I got a more efficient uh, mower that, that takes up the time, but it, it's there. I, I love it, you know? And so that's all I'm saying about that. You know, it's not going anywhere. I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna keep it, you know, indefinitely. As long as it runs, but you know, let me open this enclosed trailer up, see if we can get inside. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me get y'all set up, cause it's kind of it's kind of difficult doing this way. And so, put y'all on, on my little handy dandy table for right now. That, that's what's good about having a um, a 50 foot uh, storage unit. You pull your, your truck, your trailer in here, still open everything up. And if this trim store wasn't sitting right here, I could still back that mower off and um, do whatever I need to do for it. But let's see if there's enough light in here to do this. Okay. I got my 36 inch Gravely Pro Stance. That's the more efficient uh, unit that I was talking about that uh, results in me not using the trim star as much. I got my uh, Permagreen Magnum, uh, which is why I don't use those push spreader, spreaders as much. And I typically, uh, the, the product that I mix in there is is long Pacific, so when I get to the yard, I, I make an assessment on what it needs, and I can, I can mix it up on the spot. That's a a twelve gallon tank on it. Um, I also got my accelerator bagger for the uh, for my big Gravely fifty two inch Gravely. I have a backup unit of this. It's not. It's not here right now because I just got it back from the shop. It's in the, in my garage at the house. But, um, yeah, so I got that as a backup. And for my handheld equipment, uh, all PAS systems, I got the 225 with the weed eater attachment, 2620 with my hedge trimmer. Uh, 225 with my edger attachment and then the blower that I have is my red max 5200 and I need I need to get a backup blower that's that's the only need but at the moment if if in a pinch I can use my Husqvarna which still runs and it can get things done until I get that one serviced. Or get, I mean, everything running in tip top condition right now, but I would like to get a uh, a newer backpack blower. It's so like I said, uh, it's more of a want instead of a, a 
necessity at the moment. So, oops, close this back up. I said, uh, this is a, uh, a six and a half by 14 enclosed trailer I'm pulled by my 1993 Chevy 2500. And of course, like I said, I like having backups. So there's my Dodge Ram 1500, it's a V6. And it pulls my um, a utility uh, trailer, uh, six and a half by 14, uh, dual ramp, side ramp, back ramp. And another piece that y'all might think has no relevancy to my business is my 2016 Cadillac Escalade. And the relevancy is that in extreme emergencies, it could be a tow vehicle for either one of these trailers because of the towing capacity of it is like 8,000 to 9,000 pounds. But like I said, that's an extreme emergency. But uh, what, I, what I do when, when it's raining, when it's, when it's dark, when I'm trying, when it, when the conditions aren't favorable for lawn care, I I do some ride share. And um, so my ear and then look, get that lit. So ride share. Um, and surprisingly, with that vehicle, it's neck and neck with the income that I produce with lawn care. You know, so, and I know a, a lot of people that actually do ride share think there's no money in it. It, it actually depends on the vehicle that you have. And that, this, that may be a type of a, a, a different video, but I'm gonna get into it right now. So, uh, with ride share, If you got a, a basic, you know, X vehicle, is it, it's gonna take you forever to get like five hundred dollars a day. You might not, your your best day is probably two fifty. You know, on on your average best day, let's put it like that. But with a with a Escalade or a similar vehicle like that, it could you could easily make five hundred dollars a day with uh, doing ride share and, and what makes that possible is when people get in your vehicle it's a nicer vehicle a lot of times they expect to get picked up in a Prius or some small economy vehicle so when they get into a luxury vehicle they're, they're pleased with it and and the tips are more you get you get more tips you get higher tips and then you don't have to drive as far to to make the income because the per mile uh, rate is higher on the vehicle. Now you might say, well, the gas and the maintenance are higher on the vehicle, but that's still offset by the tips. You know, and, and you're never gonna get paid what you what you should get paid through Uber or Lyft. So um, being able to do private rides after you get your proper licenses and the insurance, you can do the, the same task privately and then the rate goes up. That's, that's really what's making it work for me is being, um, having the proper driver's license to transport passengers to have the proper insurance, 
going uh, to the Department of Safety and getting the uh, get getting registered, you know, and then it's nothing to charge a thousand dollars to drive somebody around all day, and people will pay it, especially the executives that that every second counts, every every second means money to them, and so if they can take a, a thirty minute ride and not have to worry about a focus on traffic and they can sit back on their on their phones or on their laptop take a meeting while you're driving and that 30 minutes for them might translate to five or ten thousand dollars for whatever business they're involved in and so paying you a thousand dollars to drive them around all day and allow them to take several meetings in transit to their, their location it's worth it to them and then for you you made that thousand dollars which all you had to do is really drive around for for maybe a couple of hours two or three hours a lot of time is just uh sitting there being available uh when they got to go from uh another location to a different location so i mean my my agenda is just being able to, at any moment that I decide that I want to go make some money, having a way to do that. I could wake up three in the morning, go out there and get some money, you know. And and aside from that, turning everything I do into an in income producing activity is something that I'm trying to do, you know. Whether that's uh, making doing restaurant reviews, anytime I go out to eat to a different restaurant, do a review on that, turn it into some type. Y'all, y'all know what I'm trying to get to. Y'all, y'all understand. I know y'all understand at this point. Like anything, money can be made on anything you do, especially once you create a platform on one of these uh, social media type of deals with this YouTube or TikTok or anything like there there's people that's interested in seeing some of everything so you know ultimately I don't want to do something along that line but back to what I was saying about this this lawn care stuff let me show you another thing about this uh this this storage unit which I showed him uh last year so a video the uh, outlet for the power you know I got it hooked up and, and what I what I use it for is I charge um, my battery for my Dewalt and um, my rigid tools and also my air compressor and and I got a a shop vac all the way down there on the end. Uh, a bench grinder. You know. I don't I don't have my computer in here anymore, but I do, uh, you know. From time to time when I do bring my laptop, you know, I can, if the battery is low, I can plug it up and get some stuff done. You know, keep everything charged up, you know. I'm gonna leave y'all with that. Uh, yeah, if I left anything out by the time this video is published, I'll be done added it in. So, so I'll let you guys on the next one. All right.